had their douchey moments. No, it was in BB19. Paul. They've each had their douchey moments, but watching the feeds, I've never seen them hold up in a room saying horrible things about other house guests. That's a good point. BB US feeds, hold on, Mark was saying shit, and they were saying about someone cooking and cleaning or something. If someone, if, I think it was, if Kiki cooks and cleans for us, we'll let her stay or some bullshit like that. Anyway. Literally, all that happened was Paul sitting in a ring with his minions saying the most vile things about the rest of the house. I'm hoping for a pretty boy's final three with Dane or Anthony winning. I was ringing against them in the beginning, but by about midway through, the show, the show, and literally nobody even making a dent in their reliance, I feel like they're the only ones who deserve it at this point. And Kira is just that person everyone tries to avoid in the playground. <laughs> Chelsea and Eddie going out back to back broke my heart. I recently started watching BB Can. I've seen the se- season one and the Topaz Blender, and this is the only other season I've watched. The comps are super creative and visually stimulating, but they seem to be overly physical. If you could change anything about BB Cam moving forward, what would it be? Sorry if it's all too long. Sorry if this is too long. Hope you and Gaz are doing very well. Luke, love hearts. Um, yeah, I, they were saying that on Rob as a podcast, actually. Like, the comps are just really physical and they need more crapshoot ones. I think I would change that. The other thing I would change is the casting. I think the casting is bad. But I think the problem is, I think Canadian people are just too nice. But I wish they'd just put more diverse people in there. Like, put, you know, four or five... No, more. Put four, five, six, seven black, gay, Asian people in there. People, you know, Canadian, French people. Lesbians. Two lesbians. Go on, treat yourself. You know, put a mixture in there. We don't need five white, straight males in there. Why can't we have a mixture? Um... And then if a couple of lesbians go at the start, well, we've still got this black guy, we've still got this Asian girl, you know. We've got the mixture, so... just It needs to start off maybe imbalanced, have more minorities than straights and white people, you know. Then they can band together and it can have a bit of a different outcome. Outcome. Um, and yeah, I'd have a few more random competitions like they do on BBUS where you just... I don't know, roll a ball into something. Actually, they did do that on BB Can, didn't they? Uh, yeah, there doesn't seem to be as many sort of true or false and all that. Definitely less this year than normal, I feel like. You know, did this happen before this or after? They have loads of shit like that on um, on BBUS. Mind you, they're quite boring comps to watch, but I suppose you get a better week out of it in a way. Hmm. Hold on, Alfie's texting back. Have you watched the video episode? Yes. Please, no mouse. God. Okay, let's read Alfie's... Shush. Email. Hold on, I need a bit of string. Don't start. Shall I feed the cat? I'm going to feed the cat and then read Alfie's email. Right, it's time for Alfie's behind the scenes Big Brother Canada. So if you don't know who Alfie is, you really should do by now. He is a big, massive Big Brother fan. Let me tell you his Twitter handle. Alfie. It's Alfie S12. And he's Alfie Sheldon. We always talk about him on the podcast anyway. But he flew out to Canada for two weeks. And he had a hell of a time. And here we go. Are you ready? My BB on Blast magazine deal. Hi, I'm Alfie, first time listener. Oh wait, that's not how I meant to start this. You're not a first time listener. So I'm finally emailing to give... Oh. Come here. Come here and shut up. Because we're reading a story and you're making it annoying. Come here, good boy. Are you right, dear? Okay, here we go. Let's try again. So I'm finally emailing to give BB on Blast my exclusive story as promised. I've not even paid him for this, you know. I've no idea how to start this. Took about an hour to get there, including getting on the wrong train first. Does he mean Canada or to the... So he went to two evictions. He went to one eviction and then he went to the double eviction. I know I'm telling you, he's probably going to tell you this. Including getting on the wrong train at first. Why? Canadians speak English, don't they? Um, And for the first time in years, I actually heard people talking about Big Brother in public. Can you imagine that over here? Only if it was Gaz interviewing me from the street. Well, not now, but when it was actually on TV. N- not even then. I was on the bus on the way there and just heard Big Brother mention, and then they started singing the theme tune. 
Safe to say, I did not join in. I know you would have, though. <laughs> Gaz probably would have. Uh, I bet that give you a little thrill, though. I arrived, messaged Trevor, Trevor Boris, and then waited outside while the two queues were in front of me, one for those with tickets and one for people without. And this is the embarrassing story that I think I told you on the last pod. Trevor was driving out to go and get a drink or something, and he stopped to tell me, and then the whole line was just staring at me the whole time, and I had no idea what to do. So awkward. Did no one talk to you after that situation? You think they'd be like, oh, how do you know Trevor? Blah, blah, blah. How do you know Marshall and me? Then he came back and took me inside, and I was so shocked because he literally opened the door, and the stage was literally in front as we, literally, Eddie, Alfie, in front as we walked in. Sounds stupid, but I was, I was expecting a room or something, maybe before we saw the studio, but it was right there straight away. Yeah, because on B, at BB UK, there's like little corridors and stuff, isn't there? It looks so nice. I don't really know if it looks bigger or smaller on TV, kind of what I thought. It doesn't look cheap or anything, though. <laughs> oh, one didn't look cheap either, did it? It looked nice. It looked fancy. Um, so he took me backstage before the show, saw behind the eye on stage. It's just an empty space with, space with some white curtains or something, maybe. I assume you know the house and stage aren't connected. Everyone knows that. Uh, do I? Well, they walk out and then... Where do they... What's the bit in between? Hinterland. Um, it's not like they're in two separate places, is it? What about that guy who passed Kiki over? Where did he pass her over? The void. A ravine. Uh, we went into the control room first and saw the team sitting in front of all the screens watching the house. And wow, there is a lot. That's cool. Screens of literally every room. It was like heaven. Just to the side of it was a separate room which had a screen of the diary room and was the only place where you could speak into the diary room. So like where Big Brother would be on our one. All the crew were so nice. As we went for each part, Trevor would introduce me to everyone, say how we met and everything. Because Trevor come out to meet us when we went to BB UK house. Trevor comes to Weatherspoons to have a drink with us. Um, the reactions were quite funny, as he'd say how I came all the way from England for this. An addict needing their BB fix, I guess. <laughs> Next, we went into the actual backyard. Yes, Gaz. Yeah, ain't yeah. The backyard where the comps are held. <laughs> Thank you. It felt so surreal to be in there, knowing the house guests were literally behind the shutters, like when we went to the BB UK finale. They were putting the finishing touches to the HOH comp that night. It was the endurance comp where they had to hold the boxes out in front of them. That comp was shit. Um, I'm sure it was still exciting though. Uh, I looked around the place, had a picture or two, and then we moved on so they could carry on. Did that look big or did that look small? That's what I would need to know. We then went to a workshop storage sort of an area, and it was a super fan's dream. Pretty much like a BB museum with little nuggets all over the place. The doors were from the Odyssey t- to start with, so that's enough anyway. Then there were just shelves and shelves of things from competitions all over the place. Dodgeballs from a BB can comp, a dice with some BB can six house guest faces on like Erica and Hamza, a giant disco ball, which I can't remember what that's from, and so many other things I can't even remember. And you weren't even drunk, Alfie. A little sign from William's secret veto mission too. Best of all though, the most powerful power in Big Brother history, lol, was there. The blood veto. It was sitting in its case thing with the lid. Trevor lifted it and no alarm went off, surprisingly, lol. Beep, beep, beep. And I got to wear it. So cool. We went to take a photo but realised we were in front of some screens of the house so I had to move so we didn't leak anything. Instead we went in front, of sh- in front of a bunch of boxes ready for the archive room. In the workshops part I noticed they were building some parts for the next veto comp too. That was the mining one with the gold that Damien won. How cool is that? That's like being in like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory basically. That's way better than what we've seen at the BB UK house. That's amazing. Because we went on finale night I guess everything was sort of wrapped up by the time we went wasn't it? But you got to see it uh, sort of live and in action. Hold on, I need a sip of water. I hope I'm doing this justice reading it out. Okay, sit down. Good boy. Come here, good boy. Right. Next on the agenda, Arissa. Queen. Who knows that? I went up to her dressing room. This is still before the show, by the way. And it was the weirdest experience ever. Like some odd catfish episode. (laughs) We walked in and it's just me, Trevor, Arissa and someone else I can't remember. Her makeup artist maybe. So we're just standing there, I'm smiling. Trevor starts speaking to Arissa and it's so strange. Because I know her, she kind of knows me, but has no idea who this is standing here and it's all just so strange. Trevor says who I am and her face looks in shock and then she jumps up to say hi. 
I can't remember what we spoke about though. It was only for a few minutes because she had to get ready. Just before we go, I told her I had a present for her and got out of my bag. I told her it was BB UK inspired, but she had no idea what it was. She opened it and was so shocked. I think she loved it. He, uh, in case you missed last week's episode, he got a, a t-shirt with Big Mother on, like Davina wore when she was pregnant. Um, haha. Trevor and I then left the room and she ran out of her dressing room to us so that she could send something to mutual friends, Vivi on blast. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't, God, that she ran out to think to do that. And that's how you knew when I'd seen Arissa. That's, br- oh my God, that's so good. Just as we were about to carry on, one of the designers stopped Trevor to speak about something. So I was standing there waiting. At that time, I had no idea what he was talking about. But as I saw the future episodes, it became clear. All I remember was something about teeth and they were debating whether to black something out or not because I weren't sure if it looked too goofy. Stupidly, I didn't piece it together until I'd seen the episode. It was for the Martian mission with Dane, of course. Not a classic, but pretty cool that I was around when they were still sorting things out for it. That is cool. That's very interesting. Oh, I need to take a deep breath. I'm excited just reading this out. It's so fun. So before I went back into the audience, we went through the camera runs or the camera alleys, as they're called over there. They're much nicer than our ones. Well, before they were bulldozed anyway. Even more nice now. Much cleaner and some nice red mood lighting. Mm, Sexy. Can I say that? I guess I can. You just have. So we went through and peeked behind each of the curtains, just like we did at the BBUK house. First, it was the archive room, and it was empty. No, and was it empty? No. Only the Queen herself, Ica Wong, was in there. Fucking hell, let that give you a shock. Only the, uh, She was in there with a couple of the ET Canada team and preparing to film in there with the tape recorder. How cool is that? Not only was the whole thing already surreal, but I opened the curtain, and there's the Queen of Reality TV. We carried on moving along, and there was Leon's lounge behind the secret door, which I don't know if you've seen, only got broken by Damien the day before that. I said to Trevor that I guess they'd fixed it and he didn't even really know but assumed yes. Did he break it? I don't know about that. Oh, uh, I can't remember that. Then we continued on and there was also the main living area which obviously allows you to see the rest of the house, the kitchen and upstairs. I wonder, how big did that look? I see you said you couldn't really tell. That's when it really hit home. Even after however many times I've gone into the BBUK house and said how small it feels, I was still shocked to see how small this felt. Yeah, because that looks fucking massive on TV. It, Yeah, it looks so big on TV. The biggest shock for me was how grand and tall it all looks on TV with really high ceilings and everything, but it felt so small. It does, that like upper balcony bit looks so high up. As we were looking in, all the house guests were in there too, ready and waiting for Arissa and the eviction. They all looked pretty bored, just laying about on the sofas and pacing up and down. That's cool that you saw them, though. Uh. Trevor then took me back to the studio audience, because he obviously had a job to do, and the crew showed me to my seat, which had been reserved. Baller. It was so strange to be sitting there, actually there, in the audience of a BB can eviction. I can't describe how old it felt, his foot, I think he means odd. Somewhere, somewhere you never thought you'd be, and even weirder, after seeing the things I'd just seen. You can't unsee those things, Alfie. I started talking to the people next to me, too, who were also there as guests. They were family of one of the producers or something. They're American and never seen the show. Throughout the show, they were asking me questions about it all and explaining things, and I was explaining things. It's safe to say they were confused when people kept talking about Marsha, and I had to explain it was a talking moose head. They asked me about BBUK and were shocked when I said we had around 40 series with celeb and civi- civilian combined. <sighs> Sorry. It's really hard reading this out. This is brilliant, though. Hold on. I was for drink. The cat's on me now. How are we doing this justice? I feel so honoured to be breaking this, this news. So interesting. Alfie's so private, so the fact that he's done this is really, really cool. Here we go. So the audience producer goes through the rules. Ah, this is interesting. No phones, toilet breaks, fire exits, act. No fire exits? And then walls everyone up. Usual clapping, cheering, standing ovation stuff. Are you allowed to boo? That's what I don't know. Music's playing softly-ish the whole time. But sorry, you BBUK fans. No, we found love in sight. <laughs> At the start of when they filmed BBUK, they always played We Found Love by Rihanna. For some reason, I don't know why. Sight, here, whatever. No whoop whoops either. Arissa then comes out. Everyone goes crazy, naturally, and she prepares herself for the show. Mm. 
We watch everything on the screens as you would at home. So the previously, all the segments and everything. Just with gaps in the middle for when it would cut to a 